My name is Richard Robertson. I'm the director of the Seismic Research Center. Tell me about your first meeting and impression with Graham. I think I met Graham probably in 96. At that time, the MVO had already moved to Old Town. We had moved out of Plymouth. We had moved from Plymouth to Viewpoint, and then we were then in Old Town, where the observatory was for quite some time. And I think he first came to the observatory because I believe he was probably home on vacation from university. The subjects he was doing was related to geology. I think he was doing volcanology. I'm not sure by then he was already doing a PhD or he was just doing undergraduate at that time. And he had an interest in the field. And I believe his dad brought him to the observatory to see if he if we could find a way for him to volunteer and assist in some way. So yeah, I mean, I, I was impressed first of all because of the fact that you, you didn't have, at that time, very much much Russians who were involved in the field. So that was significant in its, in its way and I think encouraging um, that we could probably then start beginning to train people that would be in the field because clearly Monstrat had a volcano that was erupting that therefore could erupt in the future and therefore needed to have people who were here who were trained in the field that could keep the monitoring going. So I think I was, I was, I was glad, I was impressed with the fact that he was on vacation and he was willing to come and help. And I think he subsequently continued coming back and forth and, and was associated with the Autopsy from those early days, sort of voluntary. But yeah, that's, that was my first interaction with him. But that interaction has continued. Yeah, yeah, it has. I mean, I think the next time I would have interacted with him, when he had, he had finished his first degree his PhD, I think he subsequently became, became employed with the BGS, working at the Autopsy as a work on artist in charge of ground information and I had been coming back and forth since then. There was a time when Seismic wasn't involved and then we started to come back. I was part of the SAC at one point and then we came up to assist the BGS with various things and then we took over in 2008. So yeah, I, I saw him grow as a scientist who was, I mean, he actually of course he was a young inexperienced scientist but he sort of got here and he was very strong in geophysics and in sort of his technical competency in the field. He took on the job of managing the ground information network quite well and got into doing various other things. So I, I saw him, you know, develop and work at the MVO. And in fact, when we took over in 2008, I wanted to hire him, you know. Unfortunately, he had by then decided to move in a different direction. And he went to, I think he went to New Zealand and was working in Geotermal for a long time. But if I had my way, I would have kept him on as one of the people who was there at the time working at the Ocean. And I saw him as somebody who could hopefully continue in the region. I was trying to entice this in the region to continue working in the field. So I was very glad when he eventually came back. <laughs> in fact, and coming back, yeah. that might have, he might have actually come back as a more rounded, well-rounded individual. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think by the time he came back, he had he had significantly more more experience. Certainly, in well, he had a lot of experience. By the time I tried to recruit him in two thousand eight, he had a lot of experience in the field of volcanology and working. I mean, he was working in the observatory at the time when a lot of things was happening, um, and it was difficult in any case to manage things because you know people were in harm so the volcano was pretty active lots of things were uncertain I mean, it's still challenging now but it, it meant that that experience would have built his capacity as a scientist and then he went away and he did a lot of work in geothermal so he, lot of, he got a lot of international experience working in different parts of the world so when he got back and, and he came back and eventually he came out to the region and he was recruited to work at seismic as a work artist by then he was a much more mature scientist I was glad to have him back. I was glad that he was interested in coming back into academia and coming back into research. And since he's been at Seismic, he's been certainly one of the most stable and, and, and sort of seasoned scientists that we have. So yeah, when he came back, he was, he was much more wrong than he was when he left. Yeah. And to the point he's also been able to provide cover at points in time at SRC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, as I said, he's, he's one of the very, because of his experience at Monstra, because of his experience internationally, he certainly quite rounded in a number of the things that we do at Seismic. Um, you know, he, his, his core responsibility at Seismic was in managing the ground information program. And in that regard, he has expanded our ability to do ground information using remote sensing techniques. A lot of what we did traditionally involved us physically going to the island and doing measurement. We have now developed the capacity through him to use remote sensing techniques, satellite imagery, to monitor for ground deformation. And we've also gotten into looking, exploring options for monitoring geothermal sort of heat signatures at volcanic centers as, as a remote method of monitoring. So certainly our capacity to monitor remotely has expanded on his, his guys. We hope to sort of grow that for it to become more operational 
and, and I guess one of the challenges with him physically moving to Montreal is how we keep that going and I'm hoping that we could we could find a way in which we do that because we don't really want to lose that. But certainly the, the, the main, I guess the main thing that he's done is to develop that capacity. And yes, at Seismic he's been one of the, I mean we have some great staff at Seismic, but he's one of the people that I have used from time to time when I'm away as the, um, the director. Um, so he's, he's functioned several times as, as the person who's the acting director when I'm overseas and, and running things. So he's gotten some experience in, in managing the regional centre. Which is which is again useful. Now you've spoken a bit with the relationship with BGS and then SRC yeah. to MVO. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, how the MVO the MVO is an organizational setup. It is in fact how most observatory will be set up. You know, you have an active volcano, the volcano does something, you usually assemble a team of people who will be resident in the island to ensure that the government and the people have real time access to scientific information to make sensible decisions. So the MVO started like that. When the eruption started, seismic was monitoring remotely from a long time. We were responsible, Montreal is one of the islands we're still responsible for. But when the eruption started, we had a physical team here and that team grew and then became what was called the Montreal Volcano Observatory. And then it became a run, it was largely seismic under seismic control and it became jointly seismic and, and BGS. And then we sort of took a back seat and, and the British Geological Survey sort of ran it for quite a, some time and then we came back in 2008. So it's, it's sort of, it's management, sort of management by an external scientific organization that changed over time. Now when the, um, so when we came back in in 2008 and we've been here since, the management of the observatory have been on the, on the, the, the remit initially of seismic jointly with the IPGP and then seismic alone now. And what, one of the things that and one of the reasons that we came back in because you know we thought that we could make a contribution here but also we saw the MVO as a regional facility that we could help to grow and develop and in fact the I think we are very glad that we now can have Graham taking back over the responsibility of being the director of MVO because it's kind of moved in the direction that we would like institutions like MVO to go which is where you have grown regional capacity to manage the operation and you can now have it sort of under that that you know, somebody who's from the region, in the region, who have grown up in the region, have knowledge and expertise in the particular field that you need, and they manage an operation. That's not to say we have not had fantastic contributions from people outside the region, I'll be glad for that. I think there's a certain level of experience that you get if you, if you sort of live and grow here that, that it's difficult to get if you're coming from outside. And I think, to me, I mean, personally, as a professional in the region, I think it's important for regional organizations, certainly key ones, to have as the person who's the, the leader of them, someone from the region. So I think we are particularly glad that you know, Graham has decided to take on this, this responsibility of being the director of MVO. I mean, he has certainly a fantastic pedigree in terms of where he comes from, his experience, his knowledge, and the fact that he kind of is he's also from the region, sort of is kind of just an extra plug that feeds into kind of the direction that we always saw the MVO should go in and where it should be. But do you see that being from the region, being um, a son of the soil, presenting challenges in any way? Because there's a saying that a prophet is never respected. Yeah, as well. yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's always going to be the case. But I think, I think also we in the region, like we like people who have gone abroad and, and, and sort of gotten experience externally and certainly in that case it means that he, he fits the bill, he's both from the region, he's somebody who's worked extensively outside the region. So he has a bit of, of an outlook and he has connections that is quite useful. And I think hopefully people would see, yes, the point they make, it is a challenge sometimes that we don't give sufficient respect and acknowledgement to people from in the region. But in my experience if you work with people in a certain way, they, they begin to recognize certain things and, and they begin to feel proud and recognize that when they see that the, the person has the, as much skill and as much knowledge and as much capacity as anyone else, I think the fact that they're from here also makes it useful. So I, I'm sure that that might be a challenge. I don't think it's going to be a great challenge and I'm sure that you can overcome that in, some, that with, with, in, in time. You know, um, I, you know, he has the experience to deal, deal with it. With that in mind, do you think that this appointment, this significant appointment, yeah. can trigger some of the people who are just at the point of deciding, okay, 
it's time to make career decisions, mm-hmm. be it in school or just yeah. out of school, how it is they move forward? Yeah, well, I mean, I think generally, I think we need to, first of all, create regional exemplars in the fields that we would like or people that go into. And I think seeing people who are directors of centers who are from the region, I think that is always a good thing. I think certainly the MVO, its existence in Montserrat has certainly fewer interests of Montserratians in fields that are related to earth science. So you have a lot more Montserratians who have done geology or, or geophysics and that kind of thing. I mean, we see that in the past with the M- So even, even without that, the MVO as an institution in Montserrat has certainly fewer the interests of Montserratians in this particular field. So yes, I think the fact that you now have the MVO being run by someone who's from the region, who's Montserratian, who's local, I think it's certainly going to stimulate more young Montserratians to get into this field. And we need them to get into this, not necessarily the straight field, but to get into the field that has to do with understanding the earth and, and how we manage the earth, because we're not managing it quite well. So we need more people who are knowledgeable about it, so that we could manage it better, especially younger people. Because the pe- older people like us have done a very bad job in managing the earth. So I think it would, and I think it's a good thing that it does, that it stimulates them to get into this field because we need a lot of them, we need a lot of those young minds to get into thinking about the problems to do with, you know, to do with the earth. Not necessarily focus on volcanology per se, which would be useful to because we need more, and geology, but other, other issues to do with the environment, to do with the earth, which, which are problems that will always be there. Part of the reason I asked that question is because you spoke about meeting Graham around 96, 97. Yeah. But from 96, 97 to now, not necessarily having the hard data, mm-hmm. but just casting and saying, okay, well, the amount of people who have passed through MVO who are local or yeah. regional are in, and are interested in this field or earth sciences in general, do you think we're doing enough or would you like to see more? Well, I mean, there's, there's always, it's always useful not to be complacent, so there's always more, more you can do. But I think certainly the MVO and the regional institutions have done a good job in showing people, in young people in the region, what some of the fields that they can get into. So yes, I think there's been a lot of um, Montserratians who have passed through, have been stimulated by the work that's done by the MVO, by the MVO staff, whether they're from overseas or from Montserrat, that has stimulated them to get into the field. There's always more that can be done because the population is dynamic, people come and go all the time. So there's always more that can be done in terms of reaching out to people, and I'm sure the MVO will take on the challenge in terms of making sure that its outreach component is always dynamic, is always reaching out. But I think it's done a good job, uh, uh, you know, sufficient, well, a good job enough that you have stimulated a lot of people. I just, I, I think it's necessary to keep on doing it and to keep on building on it and improving on it. Looking forward, what do you project or what do you wish for Dr. Graham Alexander Ryan in terms of assuming this position and sitting in the chair and bringing what he has to the table? Well, I well, I I, I said to Montserratians that I hope that you welcome him as you welcome him as you welcome um, Seismic and, and other people from outside the region to run the observatory. I, I think of course they will be challenging issues from time to time. I I, I think he has the background and the knowledge and the, the training to, to manage them. I wish him the very best in terms of continuing the work of the MVO. There's a lot of opportunities and potential that exists within the MVG that, that could be developed for, and I'm sure that he'd, he'd be looking at that. I think the fact that he also comes with a, a, a sort of a background knowledge and the whole, apart from being a volcanologist, he has a lot of knowledge about ge- geothermal, um, and there's an issue about geothermal energy in Montreal. He's actually contributed a lot to that. I think that's useful for Montreal, another extra element that, that would be good. So, I mean, in summary, I, I think I would ask people to support and MVO staff and people on Montreal to support what he'll try to do. I'm sure that he has the capacity to, to project it in the right direction to ensure that when MVO continues good, it's a good job and build upon what exists already to provide the service that Montreal needs as it moves from sort of a period of which, which has been very um, traumatic in terms of the working into sort of more sort of routine operations and, and probably looking at what may happen in the future if things reactivate or not, you know, uh, sort of leave them with the volcano more in a consistent way. I think he's certainly have the capacity to drive the organization in the right direction.